uh, such as charcoal burning uh, and overgrazing uh, through integrated watershed management is key to restoring and protecting water resources and improving the livelihood of smallholder farmers uh, in the lower Kafue subcatchment uh, here in Zambia. In this session, uh, which is entitled Restoring Zambia's Rivers uh, to Build Climate Resilience, we get to have an opportunity to share how the European Union and German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development funded AWARE project is restoring Zambia's rivers and working towards building up resilience within communities here in Zambia. The session itself um, incorporates a panel discussion, which we'll have in a little while, a, sh um, a short film screening, and indeed a better field visit. And it also brings together AWARE partners to discuss integrated uh, watershed management and also provide you with that first-hand experience through a better field visit to the lower Kafue subcatchment here in Zambia. My name is uh, Bela Zulu, I'm your co-host and moderator for the session, and I'm also a team member here at GIZ uh, in Zambia. Uh, let me mention from the onset that I'm encouraging all our participants, all our attendees uh, in this session uh, to participate by posting your questions and comments in the chat function within Pathable. That way it will be possible to save them and re retrieve them uh, for use. And of course, I'll mention quickly that later in this, in this session, we'll have a dedicated Q&A section. And this is where we're going to review uh, those questions and comments um, and then be able to address them, uh, hopefully. I now have the honor, allow me and privilege uh, to invite the Deputy Head of Development and Cooperation from the German Embassy here in Lusaka, Ms. Kristin Otto, to give her welcome and opening remarks. Ms. Otto, please. Good morning and thank you, moderator. Um, good morning to everyone here at this early hour. <laughs> uh, it's a, indeed a lovely morning in Lusaka. Welcome from Lusaka. So uh, welcome to all the early birds, the organizers, the panelists, uh, the participants, and also the audience. Um, I'm today speaking on behalf of the German Development Corporation, but as we have the partner, the, the, the big partner, European Union, I'm also speaking for them. So a special thanks, and it feels very great to be part of this important week, Stockholm World Water Week, and it's great to be part of it. Um, and a special thanks to present a piece of the work of the European Union and German Development Corporation in Zambia, and to introduce the project Accelerate Water and Agricultural Resources Efficiency aware to you today. So Zambia is a country with abundant water resources and plenty of arable land in sub-Saharan Africa. But yet Zambia experienced challenges regarding degradation of environment and water resources. Coupled with increasing resource demand due to population growth, clearing of land for farming, deforestation, river encroachment, overgrazing and sand mining, it's indeed a chunk. This negatively affects ecosystems, groundwater recharge, and hence business of smallholder farmers. The European Union and German Development Corporation jointly address these issues together with several project partners in Zambia. The German Development Corporation, me speaking from this side, has been a partner of Zambia for several decades. Improving the sustainable management of Zambia's water resources is one focus area of German Development Corporation here in Zambia. This objective is pursued by the project AWARE and co-financed by the Federal Republic of Germany and the European Union, who finances, to be very honest, the largest share of the project. The project is implemented by GIZ and runs from 2019 and at least until 2023. Our main political partners are the Zambian Ministry of Water Development and Sanitation and Environmental Protection. So um, let me use the chats and to very warm, warm welcome Mrs. Mayando Kanyata from the ministry. And another partner is also the Ministry of Agriculture. The main targets of the AWARE project are to enhance climate resilience, thereby contributing to the restoration of Zambia's rivers and to increase agricultural productivity of smallholder farmers. Besides activities on the national and regional level, AWARE works on integrated watershed management, 
which refers to the sustainable management of natural resources that includes water, land, forests, soil, biodiversity in a watershed. And that's the focus of today's session. First pilot sites implemented by the project in cooperation with water user associations were very successful and show positive impacts, which are highly valued by our Zambian partners. Recently, the project received additional funding from the European Union, which allows to do more of the good work done so far. German Development Corporation would highly appreciate if the fruitful cooperation with the European Union would be continued and possibly expanded in the future. So I'm very much looking forward to today's interactive session. As Molo had said, please be interactive. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to interact with um, key partners participating, Mrs. Mayando from the Ministry and Mr. Likolo from the Mutama Rainwater Water User Association. Thank you and a good morning again. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Otto, for those uh, uh, opening remarks. Um, uh, indeed, um, our remarks uh, set the tone uh, for what this meeting is all about and gives uh, a very good overview uh, of what this particular uh, you know, project uh, is all about. Uh, she reflected on the, you know, the, the huge water potential, at least that Zambia has, but, and also the challenges uh, that we have to face every, every day, uh, especially as regards uh, uh, degradation. Um, so at this moment, I'll, I'll just quickly um, invite us uh, to our short film screening uh, on integrated watershed management and catchment protection measures uh, that were conducted uh, here in Zambia. Thank you. Zambia's watersheds are no longer what they used to be. Forests have disappeared. Erosion has washed away nutrients and entire pieces of land, leaving behind huge gullies and once arable lands bare. Wells are running dry. Rivers have stopped flowing. In addition to climate change and growing water demands, human activities like deforestation for charcoal production and sand mining pose additional threats to Zambia's water resources. This is why the Zambian government, through its Ministry of Water Development, Sanitation and Environmental Protection, has called for action to protect Zambia's waters. In the south of Zambia, the effects of catchment degradation on local water resources are particularly visible in the degraded lower Kafue subcatchment, a threat for the livelihood of main water users, especially smallholder farmers such as Angelina Hamalambo. <laughs> Next village, village Garumba, Kotunka, one kilometer, we all take a mend. Kamboga would Janamenda, Gura Huguya, Oguba, Bidira, would you go to Hangega, Iga, Huga, Huga, to Goria, Gunina? The effects on the environment go beyond water availability. Erosion can significantly alter arable land, leaving dangerous gullies in its wake. A Jajirong out to Gajizia go, Gugoro Moga, to Raba Pins, Munda Iramana Gufa. Ingombe, Hiripengedi, Gambra Uti, Madame Ayumini De. Communities and traditional leaders understand that human activities have contributed to the current situation and explain it in their own ways. Kamboga Wumpa Mara Shabantu, Jeta Uti Mura, Muo, Uta Yimi, Kauzu, Manana Gunga, Tiwewa, Gaya Nguzu, Yagu, Daguri Masam. Working closely with the communities and local leadership, the AWARE project aims to support the Ministry of Water Development, Sanitation and Environmental Protection and local water user associations in restoring degraded watersheds in the lower Kafue subcatchment. The project is funded by the European Union and German's Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development. Through an integrated watershed management approach, catchment protection measures have been implemented to address critical water shortages and environmental degradation, but how exactly do the CPMs work? Overgrazing and deforestation leads to a loss of vegetation. When it rains, the rainwater quickly leaves the area as surface runoff 
creating erosion and flash floods. The earth and rivers quickly dry up, pushing the water table further down, making boreholes and wells dry up and crops dying. A huge challenge for every farmer. But when trees and grasses are planted, soil bands, trenches and check dams constructed, runoff is stopped and water is stored. This allows the water to slowly infiltrate into the ground, recharging the river, which raises the water table, filling the boreholes and wells with water, making the area greener with more trees, grasses and crops due to adequate water and nutrients. The dream of every farmer. To improve the water storage capacity of the ground and protect the catchment of the Mtawawengwa River, 1,000 meters of trenches and over 15,000 meters of soil bands were constructed to store about 4.5 million liters of rainwater. Planting over 10,000 indigenous trees restores eroded farmland and creates an additional income for the local communities. So to hango hango to hango amburi to ma plant situya to ratu go hanga mbo hago menabuyo. The Water Users Associations have gained the confidence of the communities in Mutawawengwa and Magoe. Representing all water users in the area, they were able to successfully spearhead the implementation of the measures as one of their members, Mr. Rikolo, explains. Coming to mobilization of the participants, we called for a meeting. In fact, it was a short training for three days. Leaders were trained. Of course, we identified the villages around here. After the training, we requested the village headmen now to recruit the participants. In close partnership with the Zambian government, representatives of various line ministries in the district expert teams and traditional authorities, the activities shall not only improve the participating communities, but ultimately benefit all water users in the lower Kafue subcatchment. So I accepted this program so that the coming generation also will emulate and learn from these good ideas we are now implementing. Based on the successful experiences at the Mtamawengwa and Magoe rivers, the AWARE project will implement a total of 16 integrated watershed management and catchment protection measures. These address environmental degradation in the lower Kafue subcatchment and restore local water resources. More water in streams and rivers will benefit the wider Kafue river system, the country's most important source for water supply and power production. The activities on integrated watershed management are embedded in the larger AWARE project. Following Zambia's Water Resources Management Act, AWARE works closely with the Ministry of Water Development, Sanitation and Environmental Protection, as well as the Water Resources Management Authority, WAMA, and water users from all sectors. This also includes at least 11,000 smallholder farmers that are trained in using water more efficiently for irrigating their crops and protecting their local environment. After all, it's only together that we can ensure Zambia's rivers flow again. actually premiering this video, so to speak. So uh, you can imagine the excitement uh, on our part uh, to be able to share this video uh, for the first time. Uh, so you are the very first audience uh, uh, getting to see this video. So we are indeed happy about that. Um, and let me also just mention that uh, at this moment, you may already have uh, questions, comments, or uh, maybe arising from the video itself, or maybe something much earlier. Uh, feel free to please uh, share in the chat and we should be able to, to address them a little later uh, during a, a dedicated Q&A uh, section. Uh, so allow me to now just go straight into our panel uh, discussion. So I will quickly uh, introduce um, the panelists. Uh, we will have on the panel, um, again, uh, Ms. Christine Otto. She is the head of development cooperation from the German embassy here in Zambia. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, 
But then we also have uh, Ms. Mayando Kanyanta Chilembo. Uh, she is a senior environmental officer, Ministry of Water Development, Sanitation and Environmental Protection under the, de uh, the, the Department of Environmental Protection. Um, and then last but not least, uh, Mr. Namushi Likolo. Uh, this is the man you've already seen in the video. Um, uh, we are happy to be able to bring him uh, on this particular you know, session because he is a, a community member, but most importantly, he was also involved really on the ground you know, uh, from the onset uh, of these activities. He is a member of the local uh, water user association here in a district uh, called Pemba, uh, where these interventions uh, were carried out. Um, so of course, uh, to just kick start uh, our discussion, I'll go straight to Mr. Likolo. I know we've seen a little bit, you know, what was done on the ground, but perhaps our, 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 our participants may want to understand a little further how exactly, you know, uh, this process was um, implemented. Thank you. Uh, good, uh, morning. good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Rikolo Namushi, a Water User Association Executive Member from Tama Wengwa uh, Catchment. Um, indeed, I was involved and I'm still involved in the uh, catchment protection measures implemented in the Mutama Wengwa uh, catchment. Uh, thank you very much for the question, the process. Uh, how did we go along with this? Uh, the first thing we did was uh, to identify an area uh, that you have already seen. Now to do this, we had to take a river drive uh, with the Mawama, with the help from uh, GTZ at that time. And uh, after this area was identified, we came back and uh, mapped it. The purpose of mapping this one was to actually see how far we can go how much area we should implement. And after uh, the, the mapping exercise, then we, we went into identifying the implementers. Uh, the, 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 the moderator has rightly said it is integrated watershed management. So we, we, we brought on board everybody because this is not the Water User Association's business alone. It is everybody's business. So we brought on board people. The first people, the first group we, we, we came up with was that group of technocrats coming from the Ministry of Water uh, Development and the other line ministries such as agriculture, uh, social welfare, community development, forest department, et cetera, et cetera. And then we, we, we also brought up another group the community itself where the project was to be implemented. This involved the village headmen, the chief, and the other stakeholders within the community where the project was to be implemented. After we had identified these, because in these meetings, we wanted to, to find out who will be the implementers. And then we, we identified the, the workers, those who will take uh, up the tasks. And so we brought them on board and we trained them for three days. I have already alluded to it in our video. After the training, then the, the project implementation started. So that is the process that we took. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Likolo, uh, for sharing it uh, with us, uh, how you went about, you know, the, the process uh, itself. Uh, I'll now invite uh, Ms. Mayando uh, uh, from the Ministry, I mentioned already, of Water, Sanitation and Environmental Protection. Uh, she is an expert in, in, in environmental protection itself. And, and so I'd like to find out uh, from you, uh, Ms. Mayando, um, how, how you'd say these measures and indeed others uh, address the environment and help uh, in the restoration of rivers. Uh, you are still on mute, uh, Ms. Mayando. Can you please unmute your microphone? Thank you. Oh, sorry. Thank you so much, Mr. Zulu, and uh, all the participants that have joined us. And I think um, 
from the onset, allow me just to state that uh, from the ministry, as you rightly put it, that is responsible for water resources development and management, and also environmental protection. I think we are excited and very happy to be part of this work. And I think our excitement is drawn from a number of dimensions. Uh, I quickly wanted to state that for uh, to start for starters, you know that um, the government of Zambia is uh, you know dedicated in ensuring that uh, the policy measures and the strategies that we put in place are informed by practical solutions, and also to the fact that uh, the picture of the lower Kafue basin where this project is being implemented, you know, is a picture of the whole country in terms of the environmental challenges that uh, the country is facing. So we are looking forward and very happy to a point whereby the measures that have been implemented in Tawang could be scaled up at national level. So you asked me a question to say, how are these measures helping in terms of environmental protection? I think the measures that we are implementing with the AWARE project are, are covering all the three dimensions of watershed management. You could see from the, even from the video that we are able to, to cover issues to do with land management. We are able to cover issues to do with water management. And we are also able to cover you know, uh, issues to do with um, a biomass uh, management. So to us, uh, the AWARE project comes as a combo. It comes as a package which are with solutions to what some of the major environmental problems that uh, the country is facing. Thank you. To, to, uh, to still get up. Uh, Ms. Mayanda, we, we lost you there for a bit. So uh, I, I lost you or maybe I lost you myself. So I don't know if you can, uh, you can say that again, just the last bit. Okay, I don't know what the last bit was, but I was saying uh, our excitement on this project is that it covers all three dimensions of environmental protection. And the three dimensions I mentioned had to do with land management, uh, water resources management, and also biomass uh, management. So I was saying the hope from the project is that uh, we should be able to scale up some of these measures on, uh, at national level, and also that it should be able to inform policy direction and strategy formulation going forward in terms of environmental protection. Uh, so I'll just quickly follow up uh, there, Ms. Mayando. Um, uh, maybe you can help our participants understand just how important, uh, maybe try to put uh, the lower Kafue subcatchment into perspective, just how important uh, is, is this catchment area to Zambia, uh, I would say even just Zambia's development and how much pressure perhaps it faces. Yes, I, I think the, to us, the lower Gafiwe subcatchment comes out uh, very key. Uh, maybe I should start to state that, you know, environmental protection to, is, is the heart of economic development. And when you talk about the basin, you know that it runs from, from the Goma Belt up to the southern part of Zambia. In terms of scale, it is one of the largest basin. But the work that is being done in the lower Gafiwe uh, sub basin, you know, to, to us as in, from the environmental management department, it is the core, the heart of social economic development of the country. Why am I saying this? Look at the basin itself. Look at how much contribution the basin is able to, 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 to bring in terms of economic development. So sustaining the basin, sustaining the ecological or uh, the ecosystem services that the basin is able to provide to us is key for the sustaining of Zambia's economic development. Why? I know that sometimes, I'm, I don't know whether my language is very clear, but what I'm trying to say is when I talk about the ecosystem services that the basin is able to produce, you know that water, for example, is a, major, is a driver of economic development. Talk about the other natural resources that are, that, that are in the basin. Talk about the tourism potential of the basin. So if we are able to sustain these services that the ecosystem is able to provide, to us from the, from the government point of view, we are able to sustain social economic development of this country. Uh, thank you so much uh, for, for that response, uh, Ms. Mayando. Um, I'll now move on uh, to Ms. Otto. Um, I know that in the midst of many other challenges, at least for a country like Zambia, 
uh, why should integrated you know, watershed management and, uh, and, and protection uh, still remain a priority? Thank you, Mr. Zuzu, uh, for the question. Um, I think it's quite a broad question. And so I will start broad and I hope I can break it down so that everyone understands what I try to um, answer. So what I see, Zambia has a vision. Zambia wants to become a prosperous middle income nation by 2030. It means to aspire to live in a strong and dynamic middle income industrial nation that provides opportunities for improving the well-being of all. So, and then we have some facts and figures. We know that 80% of the working age population are smallholder farmers. That's an incredible large number. And actually that's the backbone of the country. So we also know that the agricultural sector is the largest employer in the country. And then we also know the frequency and intensity of droughts and floods have increased in Zambia over the past few decades. And that negatively affects work and livelihood conditions of these people. So um, thus, a large number of people and the country's largest employer are very vulnerable currently. We see that um, human and economic development cannot happen without considering the environment and the nature. And this is actually the core of the idea of integrated watershed management. So it is defined as a process which promotes the coordinated development and management of water, land, and related resources in order to maximize the economic and social welfare in an equitable manner without compromising the sustainable of vital ecosystems. And it actually reflects the Zambia's vision perfectly. It means so let me reiterate the vision. It's to live in a strong and dynamic middle income industrial nation that provides opportunities for improving the well being of all. So, why then catchment protection measures? Again, hard facts are liquidation of environment and water resources, river encroachment, deforestation, and something else. It all happens in Zambia. It threatens the life of the smallholder farmers in, for example, due to lower water availability for arable land and the cattle. Due to the loss of vegetation, the soil cannot store water and soil fertility decreases. So in my opinion, my understanding why catchment protection measures, it's clear of what has to be done to protect a large number, that large number of people working in the agriculture sector, the largest employer, to and to become resilient against increasing droughts and floods, the effects of climate change. So after having said all that on a larger scale, catchment protection measures are the what has to be done. It's maybe a puzzle piece, but it's a strong one key action to attain Zambia's vision 2030. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much uh, for that elaborate uh, explanation, uh, um, uh, Ms. Otto. And indeed, uh, giving reason uh, why uh, uh, catchment protection and integrated you know, watershed uh, management uh, should be a priority uh, for a country like Zambia. And I like how you relate that whatever these activities, um, which uh, can be seemingly, when you, you do them at a local level, they may be seemingly insignificant, but how actually they are, they are, they are, they are actually contributing uh, towards vision 2030, but that uh, it's actually these activities that are going to help, you know, make uh, the smallholder farmers uh, to be more resilient. And also to mention that for, for a country like Zambia, and I guess many other countries, um, smallholder farmers uh, play a very important role uh, in, the, in the economy. Uh, thank you so much uh, once again. Um, Mr. Likolo, I'll, I'll get back to you um, um, and, and just try to, um, I know we saw something already in the video, in terms of what was done, um, but are you able to, uh, to, to share uh, again specifically like the, the actual measures that were um, implemented um, in your area uh, since you are indeed a, a community member? 
but you may also want to, to, to help us understand um, as somebody who was on the ground and who is on the ground, how um, easy they can be uh, to replace. Thank you very much. Uh, I muted Bela. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, I'm on the ground. I was on the ground. And uh, we have already showed, uh, we have already viewed the, 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 the video which exposed to us a lot of activities. Um, and those were the measures. And I will specifically go to these measures one by one. Uh, the measures that we took were as follows. Um, we dug soil bands. A soil band is actually a shallow trench measuring five meters with the uh, 50 centimeters width and 50 centimeters in depth. And if you filled with water, it can actually hold 1,500 uh, liters of water. Now, the purpose of uh, constructing these soil bands is actually to sink the runoff water underground with the purpose of replenishing the underground source of water so that it can be easily made available when we require it. So we did about 3,117 of these soil bands. And then we dug also uh, trenches. And these trenches measure three meters by one meter by one meter in depth. And if filled with water, again, they will hold about 3,000 liters of water. And the purpose again is to sink this water down, to percolate it down, so that we can harvest it later to replenish the underground water. You saw Angelina actually uh, going one kilometer to fetch water using carrying a drum on her head. This is something that we want to curtail, to stop, so that when Angelina wants water, she can dig a, 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 a well, a shallow well, and be able to harvest water to get it through this uh, uh, intervention. We also planted trees. Trees play a greater role in uh, implementing and restore the ecosystem. Trees can control uh, erosion. Trees can be, act as windbreakers through their branches and so on. And we planted again a lot of trees, 7,000 plus trees. And 70% of these have taken off. And then uh, we are planning also to uh, build a check dam. The purpose of a check dam is actually to harvest the runaway soil, the eroded soil, and also water. But this has not been done due to the um, aggressiveness of the COVID-19. However, how can we replicate this? How easy can we replicate this intervention? It is simple. Why? Because the tools, the equipment used can be afforded by everyone. We just need a pick and a shovel. We need a string. We need a spirit level or a line level. And that is done. And anyone else can afford this and they take the technology into their village. So it's a simple and straightforward, but very sustainable and important technology. Thank you very much. Uh, um, looking at what uh, Mr. Likolo has explained, um, the measures that were done, um, in what way uh, can your ministry, um, the government indeed through your ministry, um, help to support other communities? Uh, is there any plans or is there anything that's been done uh, to see that uh, these measures, which are for now, uh, at least from the project's point of view, still a bit localized, uh, can be you know, done or replicated uh, through the government support, uh, through your, 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 your ministry. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Zulu, even though at some point you were, you were cut. 
Yeah, but I was able to get you very loud and clear. And I think, I, let me just, allow me just even to echo uh, my two colleagues, uh, the earlier speaker's sentiments in terms of what this project is all about before I come to answer your questions in terms of what the ministry is able to do right now. I think it is clear that the picture of uh, the lower Gafiwe subbasin, the, the picture of the pilot area that we are talking about in this project, the Mdawenga area, is a picture of Zambia. I think that one should be made very clear. It is a picture of Zambia in terms of what is happening in terms of environmental degradation. What the project is offering as solutions to us do not only speak to climate change adaptation, but they also speak to sustain uh, production of these areas. And I also want, like, I mean, I also wanted to echo something that uh, Ms. Otto talked about, the issue of our communities in rural areas being agriculture dependent. So what it, it tells is that as long as our land is able to be productive, that is the only way we can guarantee, you know, uh, social economic development of this country. That is the only way we can guarantee, you know, production for, 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 for these rural communities. So the project to me, actually the, the AWARE project answers the questions that we have been grappling to answer for a long time. Why am I saying this? Of course, you know that at country level, we have other interventions that we have put in place in terms of tree planting. How can we ensure that, uh, um, for example, conservation farming contributes to lesser degradation of, in terms of, 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 of forests. But the aspect of land management and water resources management is something that I need, that I think at this point in time, we need to emphasize to ensure that we are able to attain the goals that we want to attain in terms of uh, economic development. So those I thought were cardinal to be emphasized. So what, what is the government doing? You know, what can the government do for, for other areas to ensure that these measures are duplicated. I think one of the key things that I, I mentioned earlier on was the issue of uh, strategy development, plans development, and also policies. I think I critically emphasized in my earlier sentiments that one of the key issues that we are drawing from the AWARE project are the lessons that would need to be scaled up in terms of policy directions, in terms of strategies that we are making at national level, in terms of plans that we are making for other areas in terms of ecosystem restoration, number one. Number two, the ministry is also at the center of developing both national bilateral and multilateral environmental programs. We are using the Aboya project as one of the learning points. In terms of knowledge management, we hope that the, uh, the intervention, the, the roadmap, and what is going to come out of this project should be able to be scaled up in other areas. And I'm happy to mention that already in terms of project development, I am aware that the projects that we have been developing in the past one year, uh, some of which we have made submissions in terms of the funding agencies have drawn critical lessons from the AWARE project lessons, number two. And then thirdly, I also want to emphasize, I mean, to, 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 to just to, I wanted also to mention that the other thing that the ministry is able to, to offer in this is the technical guidance and the technical knowledge that uh, is on the table. You, you might agree with me that the ministry is not the only, you know, constituted of one department in terms of environmental protection. We also have the water resources development department and also a sanitation department. So we are a combo ministry with, with all the expertise that are needed in terms of uh, uh, watershed management. So I think technical guidance and technical knowledge is something that we can that we bring to the table. The other thing that we appreciate from this project and that I think we are taking going forward is the issue of awareness creation and education. That's the project uh, as, as brought forward. But also, before I end, allow me also to say one of the key components in terms of forest direction that we that has come out of these projects is the issue of community participation. And I think for a long time in terms of government policy, we have been thinking about how we can ensure that uh, local communities are able to take this agenda of uh, environmental protection and conservation and move with it. And I think we are happy to see the communities in Dawenga, uh, you know, taking this challenge on their own and working towards uh, finding solutions, you know, to ensure that the, the, the ecosystem is protected. Thanks.
Vera, are you there? Okay. Maybe also to allow Vera to come back, let me just mention that the other thing that I forgot to talk about that the government is able to offer is research in terms of environmental protection. Within the ministry, we have a research unit, and I think we are excited to be part of this work, which to us will be documented, and hopefully we could be able to be used in terms of uh, putting up other interventions in terms of um, protecting other ecosystems around the country. But suffice to say that uh, this work, I think, is a masterpiece, which we, uh, we were looking forward to scale up at national level. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Mayando. I think I was kicked out uh, for a little bit there, but I actually got a big a portion of what you talked about uh, and the appreciation of what the, you know, the project is doing. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, raising, you know, awareness and and, and indeed um, uh, e educating uh, the public on the importance um, of these measures. Um, I think at this moment, I'd like to invite uh, Ms. Otto. Um, I think we have a good perspective of what the government is doing and indeed planning to do. Uh, but for Ms. Otto, uh, coming from um, together with the with the with the EU, uh, you are funding um, uh, this project. Um, amid these dwindling resources, I think, uh, from the international community. Uh, and so obviously, um, I would like to find out, you know, why uh, the motivation to continue, you know, uh, funding this particular project. And also noting that uh, these funds are, are, are not in perpetuity, they are not going to be here forever. So you might want to say one or two things as regards uh, what indeed should be the way forward uh, for a project uh, like AWARE in terms of continued uh, implementation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zulu. Um, yeah, so we have on a global level, the Sustainable Development Goals. That is the universal call. It's a universal call to action, to end poverty, protect the planet, ensure that by 2030, all people enjoy peace and prosperity. I think it's a desirable goal. Everyone deserves that. So, and to achieve that, we have to work together globally, not just for us, Germany, France, America alone. That will not work. We have seen that. We have to work together. So um, for the European Union, they have adopted the Green Deal to boost the efficient use of resources by moving to a clean circular economy and to restore bio biodiversity and cut pollution. This actually proves a strong commitment from their side, not only to the SDGs, but also to their perception that human and eco economic development cannot happen without respecting the environment. I have to say that a lot of times, but I can't say it. I can't say it. Uh, yeah, I have to say it so often. And the German Development Corporation is a long-standing partner um, for Zambia in the water sector. And we are, of course, also strongly committed to the SDGs. We believe in that the goals are interlinked and only achieve the maximum possible benefit if we link them together in action. This is happening in the integrated watershed management and in the AWARE project. So we see the huge importance of integrated watershed management and catchment protection measures. We see the need for it in Zambia. And we believe in the concept as proven to be successful within this project. And I'm happy to get that from um, Mrs. Kanyata from the ministry. She appreciated it so much. And we heard it from Mr. Likolo. He, he could also prove that it, it works. And at the end, we believe in working together is better. And for, for the other question, Mr. Zulu, you raised, how, how, can that, how can that be continued? I think Mrs. Kanyata pointed it actually out. She said that um, we have seen the, the example of the lower Kafur subcatchment. She, she framed it as the picture of Zambia. And she also said that the AWARE project gives an answer to the question that was long open for them how to implement how to put that in action. And again, then what follows necessarily is policy strategies that are need to put in place to give, for example, the Water User Association a legal basis on how they can work on. I think that we can, from, from the outside, from the funding part, we can give incentives, we can help to, 
to say send an example, but then it's on the other side, on the Zambian side, to put it into their laws, policies, and strategies. I think that is key. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your response, uh, uh, Ms. Otto. Um, I like how you, you actually referred to the importance um, of integrated watershed management, or at least an integrated approach, uh, looking, that, uh, looking at the fact that all these issues are kind of um, uh, interlinked. And then your final call uh, for the legal, I mean, uh, the legal basis for the Water User Association, uh, maybe just to provide a little uh, perspective. Um, so these local, wood, uh, local water user associations um, are not legal uh, right now, in a manner of speaking. So at, at this moment, they are just kind of uh, on a shadow basis. Uh, but what she's reflecting on is that once they are legalized, uh, then that gives them kind of more mandate you know, to continue uh, to carry out their work in the community. Um, Mr. Licolo, uh, as a member of the WUA um, and a community member, um, I know that such interventions usually take long uh, to show in terms of uh, results uh, and whatnot. Uh, it's just been a couple of months. Is there anything that you are seeing uh, on the ground uh, after these interventions were, uh, were conducted? And perhaps you may also want to reflect a little bit uh, from the time the, 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 these interventions were carried out, what some of the challenges have been uh, like to sustain them up to where we are today. Thank you. Thank you very much once more. Um, yes, there are results already showing. It is true that such a project cannot yield results as quickly as people would expect. But for this particular one, and for this technology, I think if we apply such kind of technologies in many areas, I think our rivers would be actually flow again because it is just about 20 months. I mean, uh, not, not 20, but eight months from the time. We started in October 2020, and this is 2021, uh, August. We are not yet here, yet. but there are results already showing, meaning that we are even late to begin bringing such kind of project into our country. However, when an opportunity comes, it should come and it should come at that very time. We can't dictate it. Um, there are results, yes, and they are actually vivid. You can actually see them. Uh, the first that we can attest to is the trees that we planted. Most of our trees have actually germinated and they are flourishing very well. They are growing and many of them have actually grown. And um, uh, bearing in mind that uh, the, 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 the place where the project is implemented was ravaged, was actually degraded and so on, you can't expect the trees to grow so quickly. But because of the supply of water, which we are harvesting, because of the interventions, our trees are actually doing fine. Um, we also planted grass on the terraces and on the soil bands. And our grass has actually thrived very well. It has germinated. The only disadvantage to us and an advantage to the animals is that the animals are eating it, which is not good for us, but it is good for the animals because it is a pasture for the animals. So that is the development, it's a good result. Previously, the animals never used to find the grass and the area now is green. It is actually looking green. Why is it looking green? Because the percolated water, the amount of water that we have pushed down is still able to provide moisture to the pasture. And the grass is still good for the animals. The other one is the reshaped gullies. Not every area that we are going to, um, to, 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 to protect will have gullies. But in areas where there are gullies, these gullies need to be reshaped so that the flow of water 
into the gully should be actually smooth, should be gradual. The slope must be reduced. And that is what we mean by uh, reshaping the gully. The slope should be gradual. And then uh, after you have reshaped this gully, you terrace it and the plant grass between the terraces. The purpose of this is actually uh, to make them strong, to make them look nice, and also to protect the uh, gully erosion to continue. So our terraces and our reshaped gullies have actually reduced erosion, gully erosion in the area. The other uh, one is the experimental check dam. We made an experimental check dam to see whether we trapped water, we replenished the underground water. And this is collecting a lot of water for our plant and for the community. In the video uh, that will come, you will actually see people coming to this small experimental check dam to draw water. So these are some of the uh, uh, results that we can see is at now. And these have come so quick. So I think the intervention after some time, it will yield better and a positive result to the community. Of course, there are challenges. There are challenges, animals. Um, Hello. You, uh, I would say you've uh, adequately addressed oh. that question. You know, Thank you. I, I see you're passionate about <laughs> the work you're doing, but Thank I, I you. just Thank you. to quickly, um, as we come towards the end of our panel discussion, um, I was meant to give all the panelists uh, time uh, to, to conclude, unless really uh, I'm able to get uh, these final remarks in like 30 seconds. I've noticed we have a number of questions in our chat, so I would like to give uh, some bit of time to have them addressed. So if, uh, if we promise to be able to be brief, I'll ask you, Ms. Mayando, maybe in just 30 seconds, just your final remarks. I think from the ministry side, uh, Mr. Zulu, it's time for action, action and action. And I think uh, it's important also for us to bring to the table that we, uh, as a ministry, we stand ready to ensure that the provisions of the water policy and the water act together with the environmental policy, you know, are brought uh, to fruition. We are looking forward to taking a, even extra, going an extra mile in terms of measures to an extent of even calling for protection if it entails us protecting specific areas for ecological purposes. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, um, uh, Ms. Otto, uh, last but not least, please give your uh, final remarks uh, before we go and have a look at the virtual field visit. Thank you. I can only say what a fantastic uh, panel discussion, what a fantastic participants um, from a water executive water user association member, um, Mrs. Kanyata, really uh, um, motivated to, to drive that project forward. That's amazing to see from our side. That's what is important um, from, you know, from the funding side to see that the will is there, that Things are happening, as Lee Collar point, uh, Mr. Lee Collar pointed out. Things are improving. That's it. Couldn't it couldn't be better for me? I'm, I'm I really appreciated. I was part of this discussion, and I I'm hoping to see that we can continue our joint efforts on joint work, German Development Corporation, EU, Zambia, and all other peoples involved. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your final remarks, uh, Ms. Otto. Uh, and so now I would quickly just invite uh, our our, our uh, participants uh, to this virtual field visit. And I should mention uh, that uh, we it was done, this time in Zambia is like what, one of the driest times uh, of the year. So let's uh, go ahead and meet again, uh, Miss Angelina Hamalambo, whom we've seen uh, earlier in the video. Thank you. I'm Angelina Hamarambo, the team leader in this AWARE program. So in this program here, we dig soil bands. These are soil bands. These soil bands are used to be to capture the running water so that the water can sink down instead of just lining to be wasted. So after that, we planted trees. We planted so many trees. 
There are about 7,680. There are men. So we planted these trees to protect this catchment area. We planted these trees. We planted them during the rain season. So this time we are watering them. And after that, uh, let me show you the garden. We this is the garden. The garden. We reshaped it. After shaping it, we tell us it to protect it to, from being wasted. We made the check dams. That's where we were putting these stones. These stones are put to stop the garden from being wasted. We even planted the grasses around the terrace where we shaped the garden. We planted the star grass. Only that they are being destroyed by animals. But some are still there. Even the, we, we even corrected stones. Those stones we want to reshape to use when we make a check dam. So these stones we were correcting from the top hill over there. So Ngamaga na yangom bobu vere simbotu vere gaguno, Twarumba maningi hei, Hindariga and Dagumutonde hei, Twarumba maningi muende gabotu, Mujitonga sebo mbotu amba, Mujuwa to amba uti. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Uh, for, uh, well done. Showing us what's, what's obtaining um, on the ground. And the language she used at the end, that's the local language in the area, is called Tonga or Chitonga. Uh, and so I think at this point, is, um, I know we don't have so much time, but we may be able to address um, a few of the comments or questions in the, in the chat. Uh, I can't seem to see it right now, but I, I, I saw some of the questions earlier. And uh, one of them uh, referred to the to, to why uh, why integrated watershed management and not integrated water resource management, um, and another, of course, was uh, was trying to find out why we, we didn't use the word uh, water harvesting when in in fact uh, this is what we are doing. So um, I know that we have the project coordinator for aware also on this on this call, um, and hopefully he saw some of the questions as well. So I'll invite you, um, uh, Peter, uh, to to just. Um, uh, maybe provide responses to some of the questions. Thank you very much, Bella, and good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Peter Kammerer, I'm the project coordinator for AWARE. I'd just like to uh, sort of tackle a few, but um, also please invite the colleagues um, from the ministry, uh, but also, of course, Mr. Licolo and Christine from the embassy to join in uh, responding to the questions. And um, water resources management and watershed management, I think, um, Obviously, in Zambia, we base our activities on the Water Resources Management Act, which I think Ms. Mayando from the Ministry was already alluding to. In the Water Resources Management Act, of course, IWRM, Integrated Water Resources Management, is defined as a nation for the six catchments in Zambia. And then of watersheds, we speak for smaller watersheds, if you, if you want to think about it that way. And water user associations essentially govern watersheds. Um, so the watershed is essentially a smaller version um, or in, in particular, I think in a Zambian context, um, a smaller a smaller watershed um, where where water uh, collects, um, and uh, in that sense, it's more of a geographic definition um, and a more of a localized definition. Uh, and um, we then speak in the watershed of catchment protection, which would be or catchment protection measures, which would be the, the, the smaller measure, so to say, um, reshaping the gully as Ms. Angelina was just showing us, or planting. The trees as catchment protection measures in a watershed obviously based on the principles on integrated water resources management and the question on water harvesting i think is is quite crucial obviously the the whole issue the whole, the whole idea of the trenches um is to really collect water to harvest water and um, have the have the water replenish the groundwater and perhaps to address the question on um, how does the, the rejuvenation of groundwater or the replenishment of groundwater then uh, also relate to restoring rivers? Um, the, the gully that we saw is, is essentially where also a spring is for the river, for the Mutama. And I'm sure Le Mr. Likolo can tell us much more about 
the historic developments of, of, of this gully, but also the river. And that is essentially where the base flow through the groundwater, where the base flow of the river is to be improved through these measures. So that's where it relates to the river restoration. And we did a similar um, exercise. We, today we focused the discussion very much on the Mutama uh, site where we worked, um, but we did a similar thing on the Magoya River. Um, where also further downstream there was some work by other partners as well, um, by other by other organizations as well. So that's where the, the connection to the river restoration is. And we're very much looking forward to upscale these activities. We spoke about two activities today in a way, but um, there is a total of 16 at least under the AWARE project to come and possibly more beyond that because as we know, the need is great. And I think Ms. Mayando was mentioning from the ministry's perspective, there's a national need um, and not just a mean need in this lower fewer subcatchment. Yeah, I hope through that I've tackled some of the questions, um, uh, Bella. Um, and uh, please, the so colleague, feel yeah, free to add. The camera. I think that was uh, loud and clear. Um, uh, we, we do not have so much time, but there's another, just uh, hopefully I can push in this uh, question, uh, the gender aspect or the gender dimension. Um, I think we got a question from uh, Ms. Veronica Lissini, Gaudi, and she was uh, trying to find out how SDG 5, uh, which relates to gender equality, uh, being um, integrated in these activities. Uh, so perhaps Ms. Mayando, you can take that one in terms of the gender aspect, uh, how, how important to start with and, and how are we integrating it in our interventions? I think uh, for gender, Fortunately now for us from the video, you could see that uh, some of the leads even on the ground are, are, are women, but just to emphasize that uh, gender and environmental sustainability, you know, you cannot separate the two. Why can't you separate the two? I think the answer is simple. For us here in Zambia, and I think for other areas, women are more impacted actually by, uh, by environmental de degradation. And in actually in practice, they're the ones that suffer the most in terms of the consequences of environmental degradation. So their involvement then becomes key because if you want to ensure that they're able to draw the benefits in terms of proper environmental management, then they need to be at the core of the implementation of measures. But I, and I think also in terms of numbers, you could see even from the video that the, in most of these communities, we have more women actually than men who are involved in some of these, uh, uh, in these, 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 these activities. So, that just underpins the, you know, the significance of, of their involvement, not only on the side that they are the ones that are mostly impacted, but also that they're the ones with the numbers actually that could move uh, these projects going forward. So I think that that is the importance of ensuring that they're involved. Not forgetting that uh, men also have their own uh, roles that they are playing in this project. And I think from the government point of view, our view has, to, has been to ensure that you know, both you know, genders are fully involved and you are properly identified the roles that are supposed to be played by both male and women to ensure that there is sustainability. I know that, for example, for tree planting projects, in other areas we have seen, you know, uh, because women sometimes do not have, uh, you know, uh, ties to, to land, so decisions even to plant trees, you find that they have been overrun by men when they come later on uh, in the day. So, Actually, in terms of implementation, we always want to ensure that both genders are involved and also that they take part in the roles that they are prescribed in that particular area. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Mayando. It's uh, exactly five minutes uh, after the all allocated time for our session. And um, so um, I know that in the chat, we also have uh, reflections, you know, uh, people appreciating how this project uh, gets to, to engage uh, the local community in protecting the environment. That came from Sarah. And of course, I know there should be many other comments, which we shall continue uh, to respond to uh, even much later you know, in the chat. Uh, so hopefully uh, you can allow me at this moment uh, to just get to uh, close this um, session. I would like to first and foremost thank our panelists. I think that was a, a wonderful interaction, a wonderful uh, presentation. But most importantly, I think um, our attendees, you know, the participants, uh, you put time aside and to join our session, we truly uh, appreciate that. Uh, and so, yes, you've joined us, you've seen how together um, we are going, you know, to work towards uh, making these uh, rivers uh, 
flow again, because whatever interventions uh, we are doing, uh, the water that is harvested ultimately uh, gets uh, to find uh, themselves uh, in, the, in, the, in the rivers or in the river system. Because I should mention these interventions are done in, in catchment areas. So these are important areas where rivers, you know, start from. So whatever water can be harvested, you know, and stopped from just being runoff water, will eventually, you know, find itself in the river system. Uh, let me mention uh, that you can follow um, our Facebook page on uh, GIZ Zambia Water and Energy Cluster, where we plan uh, as soon as possible to post uh, the video uh, we shared earlier. And so from all of us here in Zambia uh, and beyond, uh, it's bye and enjoy uh, the rest of World Water Week. Thank you so much.